If you pay attention to politics on a daily basis, maybe you feel like I do. And you look out there and you try to understand what values are actually driving the actions of our politicians. They don't often seem to make much sense, but there is a group that is attempting to uh, to question those values, to perhaps move in a different direction, and that is the Poor People's Campaign. And we are uh, lucky to be joined right now by the Reverend Liz Theo Harris, a co-chair of the Poor People's Campaign on the Damage Report. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, it's great to have you here. So uh, I know that the the overall call of the Poor People's Campaign is to lead a, uh, a national moral revival. Uh, what does a moral revival look like in America? Well, right now there are 140 million people who are poor and low income in this country. There are 14 million people who can't afford water. We have fewer voting rights than we did 50 years ago, even though our ancestors fought and died even to get us those rights. Uh, pollution is is wreaking havoc and killing people, and so. Things are not okay, and so we need to change the values of society to put people first, to, to, to end and challenge systemic racism and poverty, ecological devastation and militarism, and to, to save the heart and soul of this democracy. And so the Poor People's Campaign, a national call for moral revival, is, is teaming up with grassroots leaders all across this country uh, to, to make our society better for everyone. So you you covered a lot of ground there. Obviously, a lot of great uh, p- policy areas, and uh, you know I've been doing research on your group for some time. Um, you really do cover most areas of politics, from questions of environmental justice, uh, racial justice, uh, the criminal justice system as well. Um, right now, in in your organizing, what are the main uh, the the main policy areas that you're pushing for change with? Great, yeah. So we have a, a a moral agenda and a set of demands, and it is it is is very visionary and it's inclusive of a lot of issues, as you were saying. Um, we have, have identified five major problems in this society, and think that we have to address all of them if we're going to address any of them. And those are systemic racism, especially the issue of voter suppression, um, systemic poverty, especially living wages and healthcare and housing, um, and education especially ecological devastation and, and the lack of access to clean water and clean air. Um, and, uh, and then militarism and the war economy, especially how our nation spends 53 cents of every discretionary dollar on, on the military, but only 15 cents for health care and education and poverty programs. And then the, the fifth issue is this distorted moral narrative of, of religious and especially Christian nationalism, where somehow we, we are, are fed that there's not enough to go around, that people are poor because it's our fault and that we're supposed to be pitted against each other. And and all of that is justified um, in the name of, of Christian nationalism. Um, so so we are, are challenging that as well and saying, you know, we need this moral revival. So you mentioned a, a distorted moral narrative. I wanna I wanna talk to you about that in the political context that we exist in, because of course as you're you're doing your organizing, in the White House right now we have Donald Trump who has his own particular moral system. Um, and it appears from some of the other campaigns going on in these primaries that other politicians are starting to uh, emulate Donald Trump. Um, does that in any way, that sort of meta narrative around uh, your organizing, does that affect your campaign at all? Well, for too long, many of the only voices that we hear on the national agenda that are speaking about morality, that are speaking about um, even religiosity, are ones that are damning and excluding, um, and that talk about issues that that our sacred texts speak very little about. Um, when there's 2,500 texts in the Bible that talk about care for the foreigner, uh, care for the orphan, lifting up the poor, um, and so right now we think that we need not a religious left, um, but to get at the the moral center of our sacred traditions, of our constitution, and that we need to hear more about and do more about um, what's at the heart and of, of our democracy and of our sacred traditions. And so we are very impacted by the, the fact that so many of these so-called evangelicals um, seem to not know uh, what the true meaning of evangelism is, which is from the Greek um, about bringing good news to the poor and um, binding up the brokenhearted and releasing the captives. And so this impacts our thinking today and um, and our organizing and, and you know, moral leaders and poor people all across this country are, are claiming that, you know, the real moral issues of our day are health care and living wages, education and voting rights. Um, and so we, we need to come together and act together around that. 
Over the past year plus since Donald Trump's inauguration, there have been a lot of different issues that I think for many people, some of whom don't pay that much attention to politics, might be a little bit shocking, like the the partial destruction of the ACA and the, the tax cut bill, the, the Muslim ban. But a, a couple of months ago, obviously, when the, the family separation policy started, that really seems to me like it might have been the biggest single moral shock to the country. Did, did you notice any uh, like renewed interest in the Poor People's Campaign or more activism around that issue? Well, I think what we were able to see, you know, we we just came off of this 40 days of of moral action. Um, we had the largest and most expansive wave of nonviolent civil disobedience in this nation's history. Um, and you know, the the child separation issue, you know, kind of reared its head in the middle of of the 40 days of action that we were a part of. And and you know, it really resonated with so many of the leaders that are a part of this campaign because for so long families have been being separated by poverty, by water shutoffs, by racism. Um, so the Native American communities that are a part of the campaign said, you know, this is awful and this has been happening to us and we need to, you know, come together in this moment and really unite with families at the border. And, and African American families that are a part of this said, you know, this is exactly what happened during slavery, um, that yeah. families were taken away from their um, kids are taking away from their families. And, and, and then folks today who are struggling with poverty, you know, have had their kids removed from their house um, because they don't have water or because they don't have a home. Um, and so, so I think people were able to see the connections and in this, this broader, or broader light and say, you know, we have to come together and stand together and, and make sure that families are immediately reunited and, um, and that we, you know, who care about folks and, and that we stand against this grave injustice that is taking place. Uh, if, if someone watching the show wants to get involved with the Poor People's Campaign, how would they do that? So we have coordinating committees in 40 states across the country, um, which means that in most places that people are in the US, uh, there is there are people that are a part of the Poor People's Campaign organizing in your community. So folks should go to www.poorpeoplescampaign.org. You can sign up right there to, to get alerts, to be connected to the folks in your community who are organizing, and to, to stay involved because you know right now we're entering into a moment when we need a deep dive organizing plan. Um, and so we need to yeah. unite and organize, you know, unregistered voters, um, folks that that aren't involved in, in politics, um, people who have been left out of this current system. Uh, locked out of this current system, and um, you know, really build a big movement in this country. So, uh, so hopefully, people will get involved. We need everyone. We we're, we're building a movement. Thank you so much for watching that video. Before you move on to the next, I just wanted to let you know I have a documentary series out. It's called True North, available on Go90, and now you can help get it nominated for a Streamy as a documentary series. The link is down below. Thank you so much.